Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight, and I'm here to talk about the Pisces um, lunar eclipse that is happening on either the 17th or 18th of September, depending where you are in the world. For us, it's early morning on the 18th of September at 3.34 a.m. So this is um, the first of the second set of eclipses for 2024. We're working with a lunar eclipse because it is a full moon. So the moon is going to be at 25 degrees 40 minutes of Pisces with the sun in the opposing part of the chart in Virgo. And... Um, this is a partial lunar eclipse. Now, astronomy isn't my forte, but I was just um, doing a little bit of research. And what I've sort of my understanding um, is that a partial lunar eclipse is when the Earth blocks the light from the sun. It sort of passes in between the sun and the moon and casts um, a partial shadow. So they're not fully aligned, so it isn't a total lunar eclipse, but there is definitely a period of shadow which allows us to really explore quite hidden and quite deep emotions. This is very much a time of purging. It allows us to see or access something that just wasn't um, there or wasn't accessible um, before this time. So when we are working with eclipse energy, um, there is almost always some unexpected changes or breakthroughs or shifts. And certainly something is eclipsed from our world, from our life. Um, but it's not always immediate obvious because the energies of an eclipse can last for up to six months following the event so you know if something dramatic doesn't happen on the day or you know in the days surrounding the eclipse it doesn't mean that the eclipse hasn't worked or that its energies haven't been felt and had an impact so eclipses lunar eclipses are full moon so this is very much a time of endings it's the end of the cycle so we're sort of looking at what we're releasing what we're letting go of what we're we are completing but because this eclipse is working with the north node albeit still in Aries so um, they're not in the same sign as the moon but because the orb is close enough it is activating an eclipse in the astrolog astrological chart so when we're working with the energies of the north node this is very much aligned with where we are going where do we have to shift and change and grow in order to support our soul's evolution and of course this is very much a collective theme it's an a collective it's a collective event but depending on where it is in your own birth chart you're going to feel it at a more personal level so this is sort of um very much about ending through Pisces, Pisces being the final sign of the zodiac, but letting go of something in order to make space and create space for something very new and very exciting to come in through the Aries or North Node. Now, the nodes are going to change signs in January next year. So over the next sort of three months, we're working with the final few degrees of the Aries and Libra axis. So it's likely that the energies are going to step up a little bit louder, a little bit more insistent so that we can actually, you know, get on and make sure that we've done all the work we need to do with this axis before the signs and the energies change. So when we're working with Aries, it is very much about creating something new. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is about very much pioneering energy, perhaps stepping into the great unknown. You know, it's like being at the beginning of the path and you don't actually actually know where you're going but having the courage and the faith and the belief to just kind of keep putting putting one step in front of the other in the knowledge that you know you will find your way and that is very much sort of Aries it's daring to step forth and initiate and be the leader and take charge and you know keep going kind of find your own way in a very sovereign very empowered manner but just back to the eclipse, you know, it can be quite sudden, unexpected change. It can change your trajectory, your path, you know, shift you out of where you thought you were going or shift you out of a mindset or a belief or a situation where, you know, you were quite comfortable. But actually the eclipse is here to really change and um, 
redirect you, but it is always for the greatest and highest good. So, you know, we are very much working on transforming outgrown behaviours when the North Node is activated, moving outside and beyond our comfort zone. Again, all about growth. And ultimately, we are seeing something in an entirely new light because the perception and the light and the shadow are changing, even though it might not be for a very long period. It just gives us that completely new perspective on something. So, you know, we are ending a huge cycle here in terms of where the moon is um, in its proximity to Neptune. Obviously, Neptune is ending its, its very lengthy cycle throughout and around the zodiac in the final degrees of Pisces. But we are working with the last sign of the zodiac, which is very much linked to endings, to karmic situations. And, you know, I'll tell you why I think this is a really profound time of spiritual awakening, spiritual advancement and spiritual upgrades. So before I drill down into what is going on with this eclipse, you know, there's some things that make this powerful. Obviously, every lunation has always got something notable and really strong energy. But this one is, you know, particularly potent. It is about endings enhanced because we are working with the final sign of the zodiac. It is on the axis of spiritual versus physical. Spiritual being Pisces, the physical um, real sort of 3D world being Virgo and also sort of spirit and matter, mind, um, so body and soul come in to play along with a real sort of sense of service and healing. So these are definitely themes that we're going to be working with. Because it's a North Node eclipse, it is very much supporting our evolution, our growth, encouraging us to let go of certain things in order that we can grow. All the outer planets are actually interacting with the moon in the chart, and I will talk you through that. Um, but again, that is quite significant um, because when the outer planets are active and really sort of playing a part, you know, this is almost like fated events and fated energy. It's something that we just have to kind of go along with. We can't really influence what is going on um, from the outer planet perspective. They can influence us, but we can't change what's going on there. So we have to sort of just surrender and go with the flow and accept that this is happening again, trusting that it is for our greatest good. Also, all the outer planets are retrograde. So again, it is making these outer energies much more personal and affect us at a much deeper level internally, which is also um, quite um, important to consider. Um, it's conjunct Neptune, which is in its home sign. Um, the moon is conjunct, it's ruling, um, this lunation's ruling planet Neptune. So that is giving it even more sort of clout, more power um, and more influence here. And because we're working with Pisces, you know, this is really... Um, ethereal, dreamy, and um, spiritual, sensitive, psychic energy. So it can be quite difficult to really kind of bring everything in. You know, I struggled a little bit preparing for this video because I keep sort of unwrapping layer after layer after layer of insight and information and sort of aha moment. So, you know, it is certainly multi-layered. It is very multi-galactic, which we'll get onto when I stop look at the um, galactic charts. But certainly, you know, it is quite hard to kind of get a grip on the energy it is very much about just letting go, trusting and really having faith um, in the whole energy and what is happening in our world as we sort of work with this eclipse energy. So just to talk very briefly about Pisces, it is mutable water. So again, this is real sort of cleansing element, deeply emotional, deeply sensitive, likely to affect our, the waters in our world, both sort of out and externally with, you know, within Earth and also internally. We're like going to be feeling more emotional um, possibly you know, the, with the mut mutable energy, we have to be able to adapt, we have to be able to shift as the tides ebb and flow, you know, again, just going along with things and yielding and surrendering, that's a really important word for this eclipse. Um, 
Pisces is very karmic. So again, there is a real sort of fated sense to this event. Um, it is very much about sort of going beyond. So when we're working with Pisces, we step out of the physical reality. We step beyond the 3D mundane world um, and dimension that we have been sort of used to or attached to. You know, this is about stepping into spirit, stepping beyond, stepping out of form almost into the void where, you know, we don't really know what that looks like, but it is again, having that trust and that faith that, you know, this is part of our evolution and this is very much part of the ascension process. So, you know, Pisces is linked to illusions, to visions, and um, it's about film and media, which is quite interesting in itself also very much linked to unconditional love and compassion and faith to source, to divine energy, to the unseen. So this is our higher selves. This is spirit. This is star beings. This is angels, ascended masters. Everything that is a sort of beyond our physical earthly experience is coming through and being activated through this eclipse. It is also linked to secrets, to what is hidden. Um, very um, potentially quite confusing as the lines can be very blurred when we're working with Pisces. Like I say, it's very ethereal, very hard to pin down and kind of bring any structure in. And with, the, with Pisces, you know, we have this symbol of the two fishes being joined together by one link. And it is very much, you know, we are trying to bring together here through this eclipse um, two worlds, two realities, two dimensions, trying to bridge our physical 3D with the more spiritual 5D. And again, it does feel like a hugely significant part of the ascension process. We are letting go of the ego when we're working with Pisces. And there is this sense that, you know, we have worked all the way around the zodiac. We've experienced all there is. We've learned all there is to do. And now it is about integrating that and absorbing it all so that we can move forward, so that we can rise up. So deeply healing, deeply emotional, deeply sensitive, um, you know, very much just letting go so that we can really bring in this beautiful new energy. So I'm going to bring in the chart next. So we have here the chart for the eclipse and I've set it for the UK. And you can see that we've got the moon up in Pisces here. Um, very close to Neptune and also in a wider um, conjunction with Saturn. And then we've got the North Node here as well in Aries. And then in opposition, we have the Sun at 25 degrees 40 of Virgo. And again, we've got quite a lot of Virgo energy in the chart as well. This is Orcus. I'm going to talk about Orcus in a minute. Mercury there and then Vesta as well. And of course, we've got the South Node in Libra fairly close by. But if we start off just looking at the moon, now the moon is really active in this chart, not only because it is right next to its ruling planet or its ruling planet for this particular eclipse. So Pisces energy is incredibly strong here, but it is also acting as the sort of top end or the tip of, the, of a kite formation. If you look, there is the moon, in sextile to Uranus, also in sextile to Pluto, which creates this minor grand trine here at the top of the, um, of the top of the kite. And then in opposition, we have the sun. And if you join those together, I know it's quite difficult to see because there are a lot of lines here, but you can actually see this sort of shape of the kite formation. Now, kites are really beautiful aspects and um, sort of features to have in a chart because they always represent metamorphosis and change. It shows, you know, if you have one in your birth chart, it's really important. It all certainly stands out to me because it just shows that there is a real invitation and opportunity to expand band to grow to rise up to see things from a much different sort of bigger grander and wider perspective so this is very much about soul growth and um, it is 
always about self-improvement. There's also quite a fated element because you can't ignore a kite. It is constantly sort of pushing you to rise up. Now, with the sort of peak of the top of the end of, sorry, the top end of the kite being the moon and Neptune in Pisces, it's almost as like this is where we are trying to reach for. This is where sort of, you know, the kite wants to rise up and go through through it's this Pisces energy so it is very much about the endings about sort of becoming more spiritual about embracing our spiritual selves about keeping you know we have the base of the kite down in Virgo so this is about acknowledging that actually it is really important that we are grounded that we are embodied and it is through being an em embodied and being grounded and being in service to ourselves and also having that current clarity that diligence that discernment and that ability to bring more order because again Virgo is a very ordered and structured sign it is through embodying embracing all the Virgo energies and using those almost as a launch pad and um, that we can rise high and of course with this kite we've got the beautiful support of Uranus which is all about awakening and breaking through something shifting out of a state of being where we've maybe been quite fixed through Taurus and also the beautiful um but perhaps slightly um intense energy of Pluto at that anoretic degree of Capricorn which again is all about deep transformation and evolution and because you know both this um the planet sort of holding this supporting role are in earth signs you know it is about deep physical and very permanent change that we're going to really feel strongly as humans and from an earth sort of grounded perspective but with the kite, you know, we are rising up, we are flying high. This is definitely part of huge part of our ascension journey. We're having to let go. We're having to embrace that sort of lighter way of being stepping into a more crystalline form, which again is part of our ascension. And just having that faith, you know, that, OK, with kites, you don't always know where they're going to go. There is a sense that the wind can take the kite and take it in a completely different direction. But again, we have to be open to that. We have to allow that to happen. So I've talked about the moon, you know, chatting to and being supported by Uranus and Pluto here in this beautiful trine, um, sorry, sextile and um, grand minor trine. The moon is squaring Jupiter and Jupiter in, in Gemini is very much about expansion and opportunity through information and through the mind, through expanding our belief system, expanding our minds, having access to more information that is going to help us grow. But with this square energy, it's very catalytic. It's sort of saying to me, yes, you know, facts are important. Um, but we also have to take into account, you know, this more sort of um, it, it is about having faith and trusting and not necessarily need, needing to know the details. And of course, Pisces as well is very much about unity consciousness. And um, because when we are working with Pisces, we've stepped beyond the ego. And we've also stepped way beyond separation and duality, which, again, is another part of the ascension process. So Jupiter may be trying to kind of bring us back to help sort of almost encourage us to make choices, make decisions, think about all the different options through this Gemini energy. But um, the moon and Neptune and Saturn, which are, is also part of this square, is really sort of saying, no, you need to see things now from a much bigger, much higher, more spiritual perspective. We've got very strong awakening energy through Uranus. And we've also got, I wanted to say earlier as well, I forgot that um, for me, Pluto being in Capricorn, especially at that end degree, is very much about creating a bridge between heaven and earth, between mind, body and spirit, between spirit and matter, which again is very much reflected in the fact that we've got Virgo, sun at one side, and obviously all the activity in Pisces at the other end of the chart. So if we just look quickly at the sun, obviously the sun is down there. It's, um, in Virgo, sort of keeping us grounded, wanting to have clarity, wanting to know the facts, wanting order, which again is important if, you know, we, because there is a, there is a risk if, if with very strong Pisces energy that, um, you know, you lose all sense of structure and order. 
which, you know, in some ways is really good, but we still have to create that um, balance between both energies if we're going to make this work. And, you know, it is being very, um, very, very well supported within the trine to Uranus and Pluto. So this is a grand Earth trine, which again is about a flow of energy, making any shifts and changes very real, very tangible, very much affecting us on Earth, on the ground, so to speak. And also, you know, the sun is in a square to Jupiter. So again, you know, it is about having, you know, the understanding that whatever happens in at this full moon is very much about our growth, our expansion, bringing new opportunities to the table. But again, with the Gemini squaring Virgo, you know, there is this real need to know, to understand because it's through understanding that we can feel that we might be able to get to grips with what is going on. Obviously, you know, the sun is opposing Jupiter and Jupiter, you know, can create a lot of blurred lines, a lot of illusion, a lot of confusion. You know, it's not necessarily the case that we can really trust everything that we're being shown or seen or receiving at this time. So again, the sun and Virgo and Orc and sorry, the Sun, Mercury and Orcus all in Virgo are really helping us to keep more grounded and to be able to have more clarity and to sort of sift through what is going on and try to make sense of it. Now, Orcus is a really interesting dwarf planet that I talked about in a video that I shared at the weekend. So just quickly, because I obviously talked at um, some length about it, this is one of the gods of the underworld. And um, Orcus is very much linked to the search for truth. This is a frequency of honesty, of authenticity and of bringing the truth to light. There is also the kind of um, theme with Orcus in the chart that all acts, all actions have a consequence and that we are accountable for every deed, every decision, every sort of choice we make. And um, when Orcus is activated, obviously here through Mercury, which wants to understand, which wants to have, receive information and make sense of it, you know, we are able to see into the depths and see what has potentially been hidden before seeking out the truth. So this is really interesting in sort of, you know, when we take the other aspects of this chart into account. And it is about having access to that information, to that truth that will help us transform and, you know, really create some very um, profound and deep alchemy here. And obviously, Mercury himself is in an almost exact opposition to Saturn, which, again, you know, is really interesting because, you know, Mercury wants the facts Saturn is all about a reality check. It's about mastery. It's about can be limitation. It can be a pause. Um, so, you know, there is a reality check here, but, you know, it's very hard to, it might be hard to really know what is true because Saturn struggles so um, much in Pisces to bring any form or any structure because as we've seen, Pisces is such boundless and formless energy. Again, you know, there is this, sense that what we couldn't see before, what we couldn't understand before, what we didn't have access to before is suddenly much clearer and much more visible. Now, we also have Venus is in an opposition to Chiron here. So Venus in her home sign of Libra, very comfortable, you know, very much sort of promoting and valuing balance, harmony, um, there's also a sense of justice comes through Libra. So that in itself is quite interesting. You know, perhaps there is going to be, um, you know, more value and more sort of push for justice, which in the opposition with Chiron is really helping us to heal and to address our wounds and to get to grips with them and to really help um you know, shift us out of maybe a state where we might have been codependent or in unhealthy relationships with something that was in just with something that was out of balance. And Chiron is helping us to shift out of that. And in the process, it will be deeply healing. Venus also in in Libra, you know, really likes to be in partnership, wants to do things with other people, you know, and there is a fear here potentially that, you know, she may be forced to go it alone 
as part of the journey. But again, with Chiron in opposition, it's like sometimes you have to take that leap of faith. You have to take that step forward on your own, out of your comfort zone, into who you are and trust in yourself and not sort of be influenced or swayed or, um, you know, controlled perhaps by other people or other beliefs, other understandings, other um, stories and other mindsets. It's about, you know, really stepping into more of who you are. So that is a really interesting opposition. Then there's so many different ways to interpret it. Um, we also have Mars. Now, I did a video about Mars and cancer earlier in the week and it got um, a restriction on it. So I would really encourage if you haven't seen it to go back and watch that. It is in my um sort of in my catalogue of videos. Um, but Mars is now in Cancer and is going to spend quite a lot of time in Cancer due to retrograde motions later on this year. He's in Cancer for the current, uh, current two-month period. And at this full moon eclipse, he is in a square to the nodes. Now, again, there's lots of different ways of presenting this, interpreting it, you know, astrology is not a one size fits all um, approach. And certainly, you know, lots of different astrologers will get different insights about what this means. But for me, it was really interesting. And I tried to express it in the video that I did. But for me, cancer is very much the sign of the home and of feeling at home, of feeling that you belong, that you fit in. It also links to obviously mother energies, nurturing energy, safety, protection. So again, all those are very um, relevant, but it is also linked to our lineage and our roots and our foundation and our heritage and where we come from. So with this kind of square to the node, so obviously it's square the north and the south node because this is a T-square. It is very much for me about um, sort of bringing in some new information, some new understanding and a new feeling of where we come from, where we fit in, what is home for us. And because it's squaring the north node in Aries, you know, the north node in Aries is really inviting us to consider a new understanding of our identity and who we are, a new understanding of self. And when we look at some of the galactic alignments that are going to be taking place, and particularly at this time, I'm going to talk about what's what seven degrees of cancer is in the fixed star galactic charts in a second. But again, you know, this is about activating some really interesting galactic um, history and galactic heritage, and certainly, again, very ancestral through the cancer energy. So that is a really interesting um, square in itself. And that's all I wanted to really talk about for this chart. But if we look here, I have taken some of the galactic fixed star chart, and I've tried to break it down a little bit. Um, for you. And again, there is an awful lot here. I've got a couple of other um, slides to show you, but just obviously the most, um, the strongest energies in the chart, obviously at an eclipse are the moon and then the sun, which are both, um, the moon is conjunct Markab in the Pegasus constellation. Obviously the sun is opposing it. And when we look at the Neptune line in a minute, you'll see that Neptune is also conjunct shit in the Pegasus connect. Um, constellation. So this Pegasus energy is very strong and Pegasus energy in a nutshell is very much about multi-dimensionality, multi-galactic, taking us way out of the 3D experience, way up into 5D and beyond, multi-dimensional, having the ability to really trust our instincts, trust um, having um, Pegasus being the flat, the winged horse, the way shower, the pathfinder, leading us into new lands that we haven't explored before, seeing way beyond the horizon. You know, where are we going? Having that trust, having that faith, having that speed as well, and that ability to rise up and see the bigger picture, which again is such a big feature of this entire eclipse. So we've got this beautiful Pegasus energy, you know, again, which is being activated through Neptune. It's really, really beautiful. And um, you'll also see, you know, we've got this um, square with the galactic centre. So again, this is about divine source, cosmic energy coming through, really initiating us, inspiring us, giving a much higher 
higher perspective, light codes, activations coming through again, just to help us raise our consciousness, which is a big part of the energies of this eclipse. Going down, just looking at the nodes and um, the nodes are very close to or the north node is very close to alpha reticulum, which, you know, has got different um sort of associations, but one association is very much a futuristic interpretation of the Esasani, who are a race of beings linked to the star system who have evolved. They are from the future. They have gone through their ascension. They've learned all the lessons. Some were quite hard and challenging for them to learn. And they are coming back almost to help us to evolve and to move forward ourselves so that you know and we have that support through the north node and obviously there you can see the square with Sirius B and Mertza which I'm going to talk about in a second so just looking really quickly at Jupiter and Saturn because I've talked about them before they haven't moved massively since the last couple of videos I've done but Jupiter now very much um, activating Nihal in the Lepus constellation so this is the beautiful star that we associate with the Blu-ray and also, um, you know, con very close to Bellatrix and Mintaka in the Orion system and Capella. So these are really beautiful energies here. And again, you know, particularly with Nihal being the strongest conjunction, you know, this is wizard. This is Merlin energy. This is about alchemy. This is manifestation. You know, this is really sort of expansion through through magic essentially and then Saturn still conjunct Arcanar in the Eridanus constellation you know I've talked about that very recently this is the river this is about elemental elven energy supporting helping us to really trust the process and not necessarily get fixated on where the river should be going but just allow it to take its course and trust that the end destination is the ocean that sort of void energy into the great beyond all that is and again Saturn is really helping us to get there through this conjunction with the fixed star and of course it's not on here because it's not shown in the galactic astro calculator but we also have anchor in the phoenix constellation this is very much about burning things to the ground in order to be reborn and that process that sort of fire the alchemy the purification the transformation transmutation that takes place when the phoenix you know set, come, sort of turns into a ball of flames and, you know, is reborn again from this really beautiful um, alchemizing and trans transformative fire and the flame that comes from that. And of course, we have these lovely squares with Regal and the Great Attractor, which again, I've talked about in recent videos, but Regal is very much about helping us to push through confusion, to have that higher perspective, that higher level of consciousness, and also trying to release us from any sort of um, experience or cases of, you know, where we might have become quite fixed or even had our understanding and belief systems either manipulated, controlled or influenced. So again, it's helping us to break free of that and the great attractor is really about truth and stripping away anything that is not authentic and of you know the utmost integrity and this is the last of the charts that I wanted to show you again there is an awful lot here so I'm not going to go through every single alignment but you know we have talked um quite extensively now about uranus being conjunct algol and this is coming back into an exact conjunction so algol you know is very much about the divine feminine rising back reclaiming her power this links to medusa here to witch wound to sort of the divine feminine being quashed and disempowered and you know restricted and worse so again that that is very much coming forward and we also have um Uranus in this beautiful opposition to Alpha Centauri, which again, you know, is about awakening through connecting with crystals, connecting with the earth, also very close links to Lemuria and forgotten wisdom and information and connections with that ancient civilization, which again is part of the awakening process. 
we have this ongoing square with Alphard in Hydra, which again is about shedding layers, connecting to the divine feminine, very much about Kundalini and spiritual awakenings. Um, so there is a lot going on with Uranus. Um, Pegasus, as I said earlier, is right next to Shiet and it is also squaring the galactic center, along with quite a few other stars. Pluto, you know, hasn't really moved much. It's still activating Aladfar in Lyra and Al Aquila in Altair. Aquila being the eagle constellation. So again, having that courage, that strength, that ability to fly, to rise up, which really makes me think of that kite energy. And then we have Chiron, you know, working with um, an opposition to Spica or Spica and Arcturus, which again are quite different energies with Spica being much more the feminine energy, Arcturus a more divine masculine, but very healing, very much about emotional healing. Spica always for me is about the harvest and reaping the, what, you know, the benefits of all the work put in, but also about just stepping into that stillness and that sense of being rather rather than having to do all the time. And, you know, because this is opposing um, stars in the Libra constellation is about sort of getting that balance between sort of collaboration and working with other people and sort of coming together, but also standing on your own, making sure, you know, that what you are doing and what you're believing and what you're living is very much aligned with your own authentic self and you are st staying true to your authenticity and to your integrity and to your true identity and not really sort of being fit scared to do that and to sort of step into that and to follow that now i did promise there's two other things that i wanted to say i i wanted to talk about the mars um connection to Sirius B, but more specifically to Mirza or Mirza as it's shown here. Now, I've been very familiar with Sirius B for some time. You know, this is a watery planet. There's a really strong connection here to the dolphin energy, to um, the oceans, to mermaids, you know, very much, um, you know, the, the water and all the magical creatures that we associate with with um with the depths of the oceans and the seas but mirzam or mirza is a star that hadn't actually kind of come into my radar even though it's been sitting there in plain sight all along because i have my moon at 7 degrees of cancer so this is a star i should be really familiar with and yet <laughs> i'd never noticed it before so when i looked um at what this star in particular represents it was really really interesting now this is from a website called ohmystars2017.com which i recommend you going to look at because um the author of the website has got a lot of information about fixed stars but it is said that this star is like the herald it's in the canis major constellation and it lies at the paw of the dog in canis major so it is very much at the front. It almost rises before Sirius does in the skies. So there's a real sense here of prominence and of putting yourself forward, almost announcing your arrival. And it's really interesting that, you know, it is aligned with Mars because this is giving it really extra energy and oomph um, and motivation and drive, you know, to be activated and to serve in this chart. It's also linked to communication, to leadership, and it is very much um, a star when it's in your chart and that is going to help you to inspire and guide others and to really inspire positive change, which I thought was really interesting. And um, obviously it's aligned with or um, conjunct my natal moon in my 10th house. So the fact that I'm doing something um, like this, you know, is very apt. Um, but certainly, you know, this kind of it's almost like, you know, there's an announcement here. There's something there's information coming forward that is going to be very inspirational. Could it be linked to our heritage and where we've come from? Quite possibly, as we have that square with the nose. So, again, you know, that really struck me. 
The last thing I wanted to talk about, just coming back to camera for this, is the fact that the Sun is conjunct um, asteroid Atlantis in this eclipse chart. Atlantis being, um, it's called, it's 1198 in the asteroid chart. So you can sort of look to see where that is in your birth chart by going to astro.com and doing an extended birth chart selection so it's something it's not one that is in my astro gold so software rather frustratingly but it is one that i often well certainly if i'm called to look at when i'm doing a chart i will always chart and plot and see where it is but the fact that this asteroid is right next to the sun is really really interesting now of course um you know, as Atlantis is, you know, most of you or all of you will be familiar, ancient civilization, you know, it was very, um, it was in, it was in our earthly physical reality in days gone by, but it was very much of the 5D, five dimension, fifth dimension, so much more elevated and more spiritually, technologically um, advanced than we are now and ultimately you know this civilization fell it was destroyed completely a huge wave came over and it was washed away so there are many 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 souls with ancestral connections to and past lives in or on Atlantis incarnated at this time now and so many of us are working through wounds and healing and sort of very karmic ancestral issues linked to Atlantis and times gone by you know and this civilization was an amazing civilization you know it was very high vibration everybody you know it was very much about unconditional love very self-sustaining but ultimately there was a huge misuse and abuse of power and you know it was that misuse and abuse of power that led to the downfall of the entire civilization so you know in many ways we are trying we're almost kind of in this process of reenacting what happened then but in the knowledge and the trust and the faith that actually that is not going to be allowed to happen this time we're not going to experience the same complete and utter destruction and the trauma that that created because of course so many of us have got that trauma that fear you know of a great wave of coming and of everything being destroyed so, you know, with the sun conjunct this asteroid it is very much shining a light on this sort of theme, this story, this part of our history and almost, you know, reminding us, sort of allowing us access to the wisdom of, you know, how can we do better? How can we improve? How can we sort of move away and complete and end and heal the karma that so many of us have brought through to work on it this time? And again, you know, it is about rising up. It is about stepping into that higher dimension, that higher consciousness, having that faith, letting go, you know, again, acknowledging that we are bringing our bodies with us, but that we are having to really um, surrender and step into that void and into that sort of that space of unity consciousness and moving away from separation and greed and the ego and the attachment to that power, which, you know, ultimately, you know, for so many lifetimes has been the, the downfall for so many of us. You know, and with Pluto in Capricorn, you know, very much ending Uranus is getting towards the end of Taurus now. Obviously, you know, we've got all these endings in Pisces. It is almost like this beautiful opportunity just to let go now, to kind of finish off that karma, to release it so that we can move on, so that we can rise up, so that we're no longer held down by these wounds and this, you know, this pain and this trauma that so many of us carried. It is as if, you know, this is the lifetime where we get to work on it and to release it in order to set us all free. So it's really, really beautiful and very interesting that it is so much a part of this eclipse chart. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found what I had to share interesting and useful and that it serves you in the lead up to and in the weeks following this amazing 
Pisces lunar eclipse. So if you are new to my channel, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer and I do offer um, personal bespoke readings, galactic astrology, soul purpose, um, through astrology, through oracle cards and also energy clearings and energy work. So please do go to my website spiralbright.co.uk and um, have a look at, at what is available and get in touch if I can be of help or service to you. And also if you want to join my mailing list I have a monthly newsletter that I send out with a kind of heads up as to what to expect for the month ahead. So um, that is also something that you can do. But for the time being please like comment if you feel called share if you know people that find this kind of content interesting and most of all thank you for your support and i wish you a wonderful um day evening morning whatever wherever you are and whatever time it is when you watch this so thanks so much i'll be back soon